I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're delighted to welcome to our show Dr. Peter Favaro. He is a renowned psychologist, author, and educator, and he is discussing his latest work. It is called Staying in Love, Secret Recipes for Making Love Last. In this insightful book, the doctor combines his deep understanding of relationships with a unique culinary metaphor, offering guidance on reconnection, rebuilding, and creating a fulfilling, long-lasting partnership. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his important book. The links are below this interview. Doctor, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Nice to see you too. It's so easy to fall in love. It's so easy to fall in love. I think that's a song. Yeah. But it's hard to stay in love. You know, it's what what is the recipe that uh, can keep a relationship going past that initial infatuation, head over heels state? Well, I sort of anticipated that question. So I can I can tell you that the first thing is rebuilding and rededicating yourself to your relationship. Very easy, very easy to fall in love, as you say. That's why we call it falling in love, because once you start falling, you can't help yourself, right? Yeah. Uh, landing is sometimes difficult, and that's what happens after the honeymoon period of any relationship is over. And people don't realize that in order to retain that headiness, that intoxication that you have, you have to constantly rededicate yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to promise your partner every day that you're going to try to make the relationship as wonderful and mysterious as it was when you first fell in love. And you do that, okay, by bringing newness, excuse me, into your relationship. That's what made your relationship strong in the first instance. Mm -hmm. Newness. Yeah. And I hear a lot of guys that uh, they love that newness part of the relationship. They love when a relationship is brand new, just starting that exciting first date, the first time that they're together. Um, and it can be difficult to sustain. So what would you say are some of the secrets if a person wants to keep that newness in their relationship, that spice, that spark? You can't you can't make your love relationship become like a dance that you've rehearsed, mm -hmm. right? Same moves, same foot shuffling, right? Can't allow that. You have to make it into a new dance, right? You have to bring new hobbies, new interests, new things to do. I can't tell you how many couples I know that sit on the couch, watch TV, mm -hmm. and just do the same thing over and over again. Yeah. And even the sex, right? Mm -hmm. You get into a relationship with somebody, the first time you have sex with somebody, it's it's incredible. You never know what's going to happen, yeah. right? Right. Uh, but as life goes on, you, you even have the same sex over and over again. And sex is supposed to be something that's supposed to keep your relationship alive and young. Yeah. If it's the same thing over and over and over again, it becomes a dance. It just becomes a dance that's rote and everything else. So you got rededication. You then have bringing newness into the relationship. And then you have maintenance. Mm -hmm. You have to maintain that relationship because everyone who's in a relationship for any period of time breaks it. Mm -hmm. Trust breaks down. On, sometimes, unfortunately, fidelity breaks it. Infidelity breaks mm -hmm. it down boredom breaks it down you have to maintain it yeah you know you can't you can't drive your car a hundred thousand miles without you know changing the oil every once in a while and maintaining it you can't have a relationship that lasts a long time without maintaining it does love change as you grow in the relationship does it go from passion to compassion well that's a great way of saying it you know, I think it comes, I think it comes to 
the point of partnership as you get older. You know, as you get older, you become, so yeah, you become a better husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, you become better at that, right? But most of all, you have to become a better partner. Hmm. You have to learn to anticipate what your partner needs and give it to them. Yeah. You know, and you have to let your needs take second place to your partner's needs, you know, from time to time. And it has to shift. It's always a push pull. One day, you know, I may need more from my partner. One day, my partner might need more from me. You know, and that's and that give and that push and that pull is essential to making to making love last. That's why in my book I talk about it as a meal, mm -hmm. right? I talk about the beginning part of the relationship being an appetizer. Then I talk about the main courses of a relationship and then the dessert parts. I come from a very Italian family, mm -hmm. right? So food is essential <laughs> to showing love. I mean, that's how yeah. that's how Italians show love. They feed people. Exactly. Abundanza. Yeah. Exactly. An abundance of food. An abundance of love is great in a relationship as well. Do you think a couple that is struggling should reach out to a professional such as yourself um, for counseling? Is that important um, if you've gotten to the point where the relationship is broken to the point where you feel like you might not want to go on? Well, I think it's helpful to try. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I also think that therapy is not a magic wand. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that, you know, there's a there's an old joke, right? Mm -hmm. It's just it's a dumb joke. How many psychologists does it take to change a light bulb? Right. Only one. But it takes a really long time and the light bulb has to want to change. So <laughs> if you if you go into a counselor or a therapist and you're already at that at that point of considering ending the relationship, it's far too late. Mm -hmm. No, I, I think that it's much better for people to go into a therapeutic relationship when they're smart enough to see that there's trouble down the road, mm. right? Not when you're already down that road. And, you know, there are, there are people who believe that therapy solves everything. Right. It doesn't. It doesn't. Right. And in, in that particular instance, the motivation has to be really high. You know, uh, I, you know, of, of course, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to toot my own horn. But mm -hmm. I think that my book is a great adjunct to therapy. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping therapists will buy my book and use it as a template for helping clients. Yeah, absolutely. Now, in your book, you talk about the appetizer, the meal, and the dessert. Let's go through all three. What's the appetizer? The appetizer is what happens when you first meet. You know, you're sampling, you're sampling the other person. You're getting a little taste of what might be delicious in your, uh, in your relationship. And <clears throat> you're not full when you're done or you're not supposed to be, you right. know, um, that's the appetizer. The main course is what it takes to make your relationship work on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, right. what it, you know, what it takes to fill your partner with joy, with respect, with compassion, with assistance. That's what it takes, yeah. right? It takes a full main course. Sometimes, two main, sometimes two main courses, right. you know? And, and the dessert is all the fringe benefits of a loving relationship, joy, happiness, right? Anticipation, you know? I think part of the thing that makes relationships come together in the first instance is what we anticipate because we don't know a person well enough to know what we're actually going to get you right know? but what we what we actually anticipate and what we anticipate is great right mm. because you're taking somebody out on a date speak from a male perspective you're taking out somebody on a date you know for the first time you don't know what they're going to look like when they walk out the door right and when you see it right you emphasize all the great things and ignore all the bad things. Exactly, exactly. Well, a pretty face can make you forget a lot. Any any face can make you 
forget a lot <laughs> if they're interested in you, you know? Yes, exactly. Um, you know, I I think, you know, I, I joke it, it, in the beginning of a relationship, everything is excused, right? The yeah. man and the woman go out for a meal and the man, you know, uh, orders for the woman mm -hmm. and takes charge and, you know, manages the wait staff and, you know, it's got to look big and bad. Right. And, mm -hmm. and the woman is completely enthralled by that. Look at this guy. He's so secure. He, six months later, this guy's a control freak. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. exactly. And I don't want to be with him anymore. Exactly. It was a warning sign uh, when yeah. he was taking care of everything. I always say that relationships are like buying shoes. If they hurt you a little bit in the store, they're going to kill you when they take when you take them home. That's a great saying. I'm going <laughs> to steal it. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. And let's talk about the appetizer. Um, and, you know, I've got sons who are, you know, their 20s and 30s. And, uh, you know, I always tell them, Anybody can be in love or think they're in love for a year. That's easy because it's all new. It's all exciting. Um, but what happens after that year uh, is what matters. Like you said, when you get to the main course, uh, how long do you think a person needs to court someone, date someone, be with someone, live with someone before they can make that commitment of marriage? I have a metric for that. Okay. Right? But it's only it's only my metric. Sure. Right. It's two years. Right. You gotta know someone for at least at least two years. And and here's the other part of that. You have to know someone long enough to see them at their worst. Mm -hmm. Right. And when they are at their worst, if they come after you, that's a deal breaker for me. Yeah. You know. And if you could get by that when you've seen them at their worst and you can write your own ship, so to speak, after that, well, that's probably a keeper. Yeah. It takes it, about two years. Yeah. yeah. You need to have that fight. You need to mix it up. You need to see, you know, where the punches are thrown and how it goes. You know, obviously figurative punches, not literal punches and right. literal punches, obviously you should be out the door. Um, but uh yeah, it's been, I would agree with you uh, at least two years because I think that first year is still that honeymoon period uh, and you don't know enough about each other. That's for sure. Is there a particular recipe from your book that you find especially effective for couples that are looking to rejuvenate their relationship? I think, you know, for different couples, you know, they say that different couples have different love languages. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's crucially important for one partner or another to hear I love you a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, I know people who can't get off the phone and feel happy unless their partner says, I love you. Yeah. Might not be that important to you. Right. But if it's important to them, right. right, do it. Yeah. You know, you you kiss your partner and tell you and tell your partner you love them when you wake up in the morning. You kiss them again when you go to bed at night, right? And you start each day saying, what can I do to dedicate myself to my partner just a little bit today? Right. That's a great, great thing. I mean, whether it's your work relationship or whether it's your uh, romantic relationship, if you say to yourself, what can I contribute today? How can I make it better today? You're going to be a great spouse, partner, lover, or you're going to be a better employer or boss or whatever it is, because you do have to focus on how you improve. If you don't focus on how you prove, like you said, it's the same old dance to the same old worn out record, right? Plus there's so much bad stuff that comes in from the other side that you have to tolerate. So much aggravation that you have to deal with mm -hmm. um, that comes into your, you know, in, in the book that I'm writing now, you know, I talk about bubbles. I talk about micro worlds, you mm -hmm. know, that your relationship becomes a micro world you know, yeah. of everything else around you. And if there's something that goes wrong in that world, okay, then everything goes wrong in it because it's so right. small. Right. So you're basically saying that that world, that relationship that you have should be going smoothly. If it's not going smoothly, it's going to impact the rest of your life. I'm saying that. And I'm also saying that when we dedicate ourselves to someone, we create a bubble, Yeah. right? Bubble around us. And when things are going good in that bubble, Life is good. Okay. Yeah. 
But when things are going bad in that moment, <laughs> everything sort of falls to pieces. Yeah. There's and, really nothing worse than being in a bad relationship. You know, I, you know, you see a lot of unhappy couples come in your door, I'm sure, to the point where you want to rip off your ears, I'm sure. Well, you know, I, I, you know, my primary job is I work in the court system and I work with high conflict divorcing parents. Yeah. You know, and I'm doing it, you know, to protect the children. Right. But I see a lot of really bad stuff. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. And it's all amped up and on steroids by the time they get to you under a court order to get some counseling. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've written a wonderful book here. Um, as we started this interview, everybody falls in love. It's easy to fall in love. The hard part is staying in love. And Dr. Peter Favaro has written a wonderful book. It's called Staying in Love, Secret Recipes for Making Love Last. We're coming up on the month, February. It's the month of love dedicated to lovers, St. Valentine's Day. It's a great read, but it's not just a great read for this month. It's a great read for always, because that's what we all dance to at our weddings, right? Always and forever. Yes. Here's the recipe on how to do it. Dr. Favaro has the answers. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time, this time until next time on Spotlight.